We're going to talk about sour beers in some, in some broad strokes and kind of tell you about the conversation that sour makers in this country and internationally are having all the time, trying to figure out how we're making beer, how we categorize beer, how, how we speak about our beer to everyone here and to consumers. So we kind of divided things up in, in a somewhat informal way and in kind of like five major, very wide categories of beers. You know, lager yeast, like at something made with a lager yeast, something made with a nail yeast, uh, the, the wild yeast fermentation where, where uh, we're using Britannomyces in some way. Uh, we're not really looking at wild ales today. What we're gonna spend a lot of time on is mixed fermentation. This is a really wide range. Right now, I could probably come up with 20 different, 30 different ways to make a mixed fermentation beer. So we're kind of using it as a catch-all, but with that, we're gonna taste three beers in a row that right now, with current terminology, we, we kind of call, these are mixed fermentation beers. They're all created vastly differently. They take vastly different times to create, and they have vastly different flavors. But it kind of gives you an idea of the amount of complexity that's out there, and why there is so much confusion about all this. I probably talk to one to eight brewers a week about this. And there is actually an underground Illuminati society of brewers like trying to figure this out because it's a puzzle. So let's drink some beer. Lilikoi Capolo. This beer has very tart flavors. I would never call this a sour beer. What a fun contradictory statement that is. This is a pure ale yeast beer. This goes right into that second category. The next beer that you guys have is called Tartastic. We actually are using lactic acid bacteria, lact lactobacillus, and this is a stainless sour. Let's talk about our second mixed fermentation beer for as big as a catch-all as that is. Uh, raspberry sour was an idea of Adam's uh, about two, two and a half years ago. He brought it up in a meeting. He's like, look, we've been making sour beers in this country for seven-ish, at the time, years now, seven, eight years. And he's like, look, I, I think we're pretty good at it. You're making a lot of really con good, consistent flavors. Don't you think it's time we like tried to step up to the big leagues and try to make a year-round consistent sour beer? Because we have Saccharomyces yeast. We have Rutanomyces strain. We are throwing lactobacillus in there with the breads, and we're using you know, RPDO. But RPDO, by this time, after going from barrel to barrel over 10 years, it's not just this one thing. We have had it analyzed uh, by a local college and they discovered about 200 things living in that, in that yeast slurry that's in there. The next mixed fermentation beer you guys are gonna have is La Felice. Um, this is 2015. This was, of course, our first sour beer that New Belgium produced. We are talking about spontaneous fermentation now. Spontaneous fermentation, what does that mean? Spontaneous fermentation means that it's not inoculated by the brewer. It's a inoculation by nature. So there's no involvement of the brewer uh, adding yeast or bacteria to the wort. Uh, after the boiling process of the landing board, it's, uh, the landing board is going into a cool ship. In my perfect world, I would love to see on on every on every sour bottle and every sour can, you know, kettle sour, stainless sour, uh, mixed fermentation sour. There's so many kind of terms you could use, and we just haven't. We haven't been able to nail it down and determine them all just yet. 